Give him a round of applause. Give it up. Come on. If, 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 you didn't, if, if the panels aren't giving it away up here, everybody. First off, Ellen Page. <laughs> Sounds like you've heard of her before. That's good. Just a little bit? All right. Next to her, Kadeem Hardison. Dwayne Wayne. Dwayne Wayne, indeed. But we'll get to why he's up here in a second, all right? And then uh, the illustrious David Cage. Hi, folks. How are you? Good. All right, good. Now, how many of you platinum heavy rain? <laughs> David? Put, oh, come on! <laughs> it was so good. It was totally worth it. Of course, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you're here for the Beyond Two Souls panel. Of course, from Quantic Dream, they make this game called Indigo Prophecy here in the States. I refuse to call it anything else. Uh, they also make Heavy Rain, like I said, IGN's 2010 PS3 Game of the Year. One more time, please give it up for that game. Too good to let go. And now they're working on this uh, Beyond Two Souls business. Looks pretty cool. Stars Ellen Page. Uh, 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 Kitty, why are you up here? What business do you have up here? He needed a black guy. No. <laughs> oh, so you, d you die in the first 20 minutes? <laughs> what? It's a joke. According to the player. According to the player? Here, turn this in. Now talking to it. According to the player. There you go. My life is in your hands. I live or die. Okay, now David, you made the game. Ellen, you star in the game. Jody, Kadeem, who are you in the game? I play Cole Freeman. Okay, what's Cole up to? Cole is a government agent who researches paranormal activity. Oh, so he's gonna have some run-ins with Jody, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna raise her. Oops. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Bye. Everybody buy the game in 2013, find out if he really raised her or not. <laughs> um, David, let's get this going. I know we're late already. Are you a game maker or are you a filmmaker? It's one of those things that for, you keep pushing the games in a different direction. And you know, Heavy Rain was definitely the step forward for a narrative structure and how it could work. No game over screens continues to go on. Then you put out this Kara film. Now you've got Beyond Two Souls where you're pulling established real actors. Uh, I'm, I definitely see myself as a game maker. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by interactivity and how it changes the relationship with the audience. When you watch a film, you're actually just passive. You watch a story that is told to you, but you can't change what's going on. What is amazing in a game is that you, you are in the shoes of the, of the main characters and your decisions can change the plot. So it's a totally, totally different experience. So then how do you begin to make that experience? Like, what is it like to work with actors and actresses like this and try to make a game that is interactive? Well, I try to, to start with uh, figuring out what I have to say. Which Good place for, to start. For, yeah, for a game maker, it's sometimes unusual because m many video games are just about violent action. It's about shooting and jumping on platforms. For many years, I tried to, to, to write games that are more personal, that, that, that have some kind of meaning and tell something to the player. And um, I, I'm just working on emotions. I think my goal is really to trigger different types of emotions than the one you usually found in, in, in video games. Now, a big part of triggering that, of course, is the way you guys capture performances, right? Yep. Like, I mean, there's a million different ways to do it. Explain your process, and I think we have some video to roll with it. Yeah, actually, um, many video games uh, use uh, motion capture, where you capture the face and the voice on one side and you capture the body in another session, just because the technology was not there to capture everything at the same time. But um, with Avatar, the movie, they, they started to show that you can shoot everything at the same time and uh, really have an entire capture of uh, uh, an acting performance. Um, we used a similar technology on, on uh, Beyond, as you can see, so it's basically just markers, uh, different shiny balls that you have on the body and on the face. And um, there is no constraint, really. You're totally free to move around. There is no, um, no wire or anything. Um, and we capture body, face, voice at the same time. So it's basically the actor is totally free to act the way he wants with no constraint, 360 degree. The only difficulty is that you're uh, on an empty stage. No, no set, no environment, no wardrobe, nothing. 
you need to imagine and figure out, figure out every, pretty much everything. And then we recreate 3D, create the environment, put things in context. Ellen, so how can, weird is that for you? If I get like a, a piece of dust in my eye, I just go home for the day. I'm like, cash this one out. You've got them on your eyelids, these little balls. Oh, these little, you know, you get used to them really quickly, actually. It's, uh, you know, you come in well, the I first guess. day and everything feels very foreign. This is like nothing I've ever done before. And I've, you know, despite Inception and, and X-Men, I've done even very limited green screen. So um, entering this was just, I did not know what to expect, but I think you just like immediately become really comfortable. And the interesting thing about it is when you first get there, and you see this, you know, this orange rectangle essentially is the space and that you have to, to create what's being created. And it feels limited, like you perceive it as this, as this being something that's limiting. And then you realize that, you know, you're surrounded by 70 cameras and you can really go with whatever you're feeling. If you fall to the ground because of what you're feeling, if you, it, it, was, it was interesting getting used to the fact that I didn't need to relate to one camera. And it ends up being actually much more freeing. It's like being on a stage in, in, in essence. And it was really, as an actor, like <laughs> incredible incredibly experienced, challenging, but fulfilling. Have you done a lot of stage work? Because, I mean, if the, if the video goes a little bit further, I mean, you guys are literally just sitting there with masking taped up things, like pretending <laughs> you're eating food and all this other jazz. Yeah, like, yeah. You can't tell me that feels natural. <laughs> no. And that's, that's, that's what's interesting, too. That becomes such a challenge because um, at, for, oh, look. at first, <laughs> ignore this. At first, you, um, at first, it was it was difficult. Like I remember shooting the scene with Eric Winter, who's in the game, and he's debriefing me about something, and I'm not gonna say what. Everyone, use your outside voice. Yeah. yeah. They, they should look at what they should, how they should feel, what they should express to you. 
I think it's a very different role for a director on, on stage with this type of experience. So now you came up with a story. What exactly is happening in Beyond Two Souls? That you can tell us without having to snipe anyone on stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, Beyond is the story of this young woman called Jodie Holmes. Uh, was a link with an invisible entity. She calls it Aiden. She doesn't know why. It's just a name that came to her. And as far as she remembers, this entity has always been there. And they are really tied together. They cannot separate. So uh, Judy will have to leave with, learn how to live with this thing and um, accept this presence around her all the time. And the difficulty comes from the fact that the Aiden is not exactly a nice pet or a nice thing. It's really something that can be very nice and protective, but it can also be very uh, violent, very possessive, or even jealous, or, you know. So, Jody will have to learn to live with this thing, accept the fact that she will never be like the other girls because of, of this presence, and um, learn and grow and, and discover more, of course, about the other side, because this entity lives between our world and what's beyond. Ah, and, uh, title. Well, title. <laughs> Whatever. And um, as she will grow up, she will discover more and more about the other side. So the game is between the age of 18, when Judy's 8, uh, sorry, and when she, for 15 years of her life, until she's 20. So you come up with this idea for the game, and why did you start thinking of Ellen? Other than obviously she has a presence that knocks out the power. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when I started writing the script, uh, what I like to do is to have the picture of an actor in front of me. And uh, it just helps me in difficult situations in the script to try to figure out how this person would react in, in this situation. And um, the very first picture uh, I, I, I took was one of Ellen. And, uh, Time out. Ellen, how creepy is that? <laughs> when I was 16 called Mouth to Mouth and um, in the at a certain point in the film um, my head is shaved and uh, so the I think it might have even it was like a still from that film with this girl just sort of staring just to the side of the lens with the shaved head and I just was like oh that's so rad that this person is like sitting down to create the story with this really wonderful female protagonist and like this is the picture that is offering you know some form of inspiration and I think that is cool and it and it corresponds with this incredible character that David has created that you know we don't you don't see often you don't see often in in in, in film either like you know it's 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 really wonderful anyway. So uh, I started writing with this image in front of me, but as w what was very interesting is that um, Ellen started shooting films when she was eight? Ten. Ten. So um, as I was telling the story of this character through 15 years of her life, I needed different ages. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I could find <laughs> a picture of Ellen at every single age. And each picture was so inspiring for the scene. So I, I just spent a year writing this thing with Ellen's face in front of me at different ages. And when I was done with the script, I just realized that this character was, was her. Well, that's what I figure out. But I, I thought I wrote a character that would be strong and fragile at the same time, would have some, really some kind of strength inside, but at the same time would be vulnerable. And that's really how uh, I, I portrayed you. And I'm sorry, maybe this is not who you are, but, <laughs> but this is what, what I thought. And uh, so when I was done with the script after a year, I, I said, look, I, I, I wrote this role for Ellen. I mean, we should at least ask her if she could be interested in, in being this character, because this is really her. And uh, we, we just contact, contacted an agent in LA, sent her the scripts, sent her Heavy Rain, and uh, a nice letter saying, please, <laughs> please do this with us. So then, Ellen, I mean, tell the other side of that story. You just get an Easter basket full of games and stuff, and you're like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> no, it was funny, because when it came along, it was like my brain didn't know how to even process the opportunity. Like, if someone had told me two years ago, oh, by the way, you're going to be making this uh, video game, you know, I, I, and, and be doing all this motion capture, I would have been like, what? Like, I just would have been so confusing to me. And 
So at first it was sort of like perplexing just because I didn't understand like what it meant and I didn't understand what David was doing. And then I was, but I was fascinated by it and interested. And so I ended up meeting with David in LA and then I was just completely blown away by him and blown away by the story and this like, you know, 2000 page kind of epic, you know, epic adventure and, 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 and I, I just was completely intrigued and then was totally on board to do something completely new and challenging. Yeah. So. Yeah, this meeting was very important for me too because uh, it, w w what really impressed me is that we, we met in a, in a bar in, in LA near a highway. And when she. <laughs> I know how to pick Just to places. set the mood. <laughs> I know now how to cool spots, people. guys. <laughs> hey, David, I know this really cool bar. It's by a highway in LA. Come no. on. It was fun. It was really about the atmosphere and stuff. But when she appeared, I had really had the feeling of seeing Jodie Holmes, my character. And, and, and that's when you're a writer, it's something incredible to see your character in front of you appearing suddenly and say, wow, she's not Ellen Page, she's Jodie Holmes. And I was just from, I saw, I saw her, she was maybe 10 meters away. And f during the time she took to walk to the table, I just prayed that when she would start to speak, she would still be Jodie Holmes. And we, we spoke for about an hour and she was just amazing, of course. So now, piggybacking off of Kadeem, is that something you bring to every character, where you envision this specific person and go out to get him, or is it just for your main character, for the, like, the main thread of the story you knew you needed Ellen, and then around it you're like, I need this kind of actor to portray this kind of character? I spend a lot of time uh, doing casting sessions. Um, that this is absolutely um, the most important thing in what I'm doing. I try to tell stories with strong characters, triggering complex and subtle emotions. And the vehicles for emotions, these are the actors. So you need to find the right, not only the right voice or the right face, you need to find the right presence uh, for, for this character. So uh, we met with Kadeem in LA and, and um, it was, he just finished Heavy Rain when we met. <laughs> yeah. And he basically spent, <laughs> he spent 45 minutes telling me about his experience playing Heavy Rain. And this, that, that was our meeting, basically. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I went back to, uh, to Paris, watched the videos, and say, well, it's him. <laughs> I, I hope he's a good actor, because that's exactly the character. And of course, of course, he was So that's the key actor. to get a role in your game, just be a big fan of the game. <laughs> Everyone play Beyond Two Souls, be ready for your chance to meet David Cage. Just talk about that. <laughs> That's what I do. So, Kadeem, I know you've been doing, like I said, a bunch of different stuff. How do you see actors now in video games? Is it Because for a long time, right, there was the, not a wall, so to speak, but there was voice actors and then there were, you know, on film actors, on screen actors, and now we're starting to see more and more crossover going both ways. Yeah, this seems like the beginning of a, of a, a new world, you know, for actors, if, if we can actually, like you said, encompass all at once be the voice, the body, and, and, and the, the movement, that's, that, that's fantastic. Because uh, I've done voice where you sit there and you kind of look at the person or you're, you're in a booth by yourself and someone is reading lines off camera. And then I've had the other experience, which is, you know, you get on a set, but uh, to, to have all those little dots on your face <laughs> and, and really try to make her believe that I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> When I wasn't so sure, I believed it myself. You know, it was, uh, it was a challenge and it was, it was fun. And, and, and the laughs that come out of it, the unexpected laughs, and you know, it's, a, it's really, it takes you back to being a kid. So I can't imagine any actor who wouldn't leap at the chance to, to get out and do something like this because it's, it's pure. Pure, I like that, I like that, good job. <laughs> Ellen, I mean, now that you've seen the other side and like, are you telling your other actor friends at your actor parties at bars by the highway that they need to get, <laughs> they need to like take video games seriously kind of thing or? hundred percent. I was just saying that to, to David and I, I just, you know, it was funny because I did not know what to expect going into this. I was excited. I was really overwhelmed because it was so much work, which was great and, and challenging. And, but I did not know what to expect, but it just completely exceeded my expectations and was so fulfilling as an actor. And I, I just can't tell you, like, and it's amazing because we would have to do so much every day, you know? And you'd go in and, it, and you, 
what David has written is so beautiful, is so beautiful, and a lot of it has incredible emotional intensity and depth, and you know, you walk out into this empty space, and you have very limited time to get to a specific place within yourself <laughs> to create what needs to be created, and it, it's, it's a really phenomenal experience to learn how to push yourself to be able to do that, and, but I also was just so fortunate, because I work with incredible actors and with David, who's an amazing director, and and so I I had such a good time and yeah so I'm yeah and it was in Paris yeah. <laughs> and we were in Paris yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now for people you know now we're just starting to see stuff. E3 was the big coming out party for Beyond Two Souls. What? How long did you have to live with this secret? A lot of people can't do this. I'm not going to name names. Eric Layden from Infamous. <laughs> they just can't shut up about the games they're in, and they can't not leak information. How, is it hard for you guys to be like, I'm going to Paris, can't tell you why? Or? Oh, I mean, I just, it's not like I don't tell anyone in my life, but I, uh, you know. But <laughs> she broke I, her NDA, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, no, but I don't, I don't usually ever talk to anybody. I, about what I'm doing. <laughs> I have no friends. I just hang out in bars by highways by myself. Yeah, just sitting there, just lonely uh -huh. drinking. Yeah, but I take, I don't, you know, I take cabs, so like, no, no drinking and driving. That's where I, yeah. Okay. But no, no, no friends. No, no friends, no, nobody to talk to, nobody cares. <laughs> I found a friend. Yeah, it was, it was impossible for me. You yeah. see, I can't even sit here. Well, that's the, you're a big gamer, right? Yeah, so this must have been so cool. I was, I was geeking out. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't believe that I was in the room with him that first time. I couldn't believe that they were going to call me maybe seven months later to tell me whether or not I got the job. So I had to sit on that baby. I had to keep that in. Then when they called and said I got the job, it was right around the holidays. So yay! <laughs> but we don't start till April. And okay, we did it, and then I'm free to go home, and you can't say anything. <laughs> oh my God! I, you know, I told my kid, and she's you know thrilled and can't wait. And but uh, but yeah, I've had to sit on this thing. It's like I'm gonna explode. And then today, I, I still can't. There's still so much I can't. Say. <laughs> so yeah, it's been tough for me. <laughs> David, for you as the creator, I mean, you work for years on this project. You, I've talked to you before and you talk about how you know you have these ideas for games and you know what you're going to work on, you just have to get there. Is there, a, is there a fear of bringing in outsiders or you know, finally bringing in these actors and having them, you know, okay, now don't tell anybody, don't tell your kid even, breaking NDAs? A fear? Um, no, it's a responsibility. I mean, uh, when you bring someone like Ellen or Kadim uh, on, on, on a project like this, um, you hope that your script is strong enough <laughs> for them. That's the first thing. And you hope that how you're going to use their work is going to be something they will be proud of. The last thing you want is to have Ellen being, or Kadim being invested in a project like this and being ashamed <laughs> when the game is released. So it's a big responsibility. And it's, and it's all about the script, it's about the technology, it's about art direction, it's about just delivering a unique experience, and this is a big responsibility for, for us. It's also a big responsibility even towards the game industry, because we want to show that you can have with Hollywood a different type of relationship. It's not just about having a nice name on your pack shot. It's about having a creative relationship, bringing talents to games to improve the quality of the games we make. So it's, it's incredibly important for me, and I really feel the responsibility of it towards Ellen, Kadim, all the actors, but also towards the game industry. How long is that road for what you're talking about? Where it's not just starring, blah, 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 and they just have some hammed in dialogue that isn't good, it's a movie tie and whatever. How long do you think it is before more people are taking games seriously as an art form or in telling this engaging kind of story and bringing in the top talent and getting this real collaborative process? You know, I started in this industry 15 years ago thinking that games would become art in the next year. So that was 15 years ago, and it's still not exactly where I would like it to then be. Then the guy game happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's an Kids industry. Wikipedia that one. It, it'll, make, it'll be funny when you hear it later. <laughs> it's an interesting industry because y you see games that are really about shooting, and it's just about fun and adrenaline, and that's fine. And you see, most of the time, what we call indie games, people who have little resources but do incredible creative stuff. Um, 
And, and we try to find our, our own way with all, within all this and try to, to explore a different direction with storytelling, which is unusual because usually when you're in a game, you have a gun in your hand and your main activity is to shoot. And we try to make games where what happens is that you make choices and these choices have consequences on the plot. So it's story driven and it's based on emotion and more mature themes that you, what you usually find in games. Now, you say all that, and I mean, there is action in Beyond Two Souls. Not, from what I've seen, yeah. gunplay so far, but you can switch yeah. between Jody and Aiden. Yeah. You have all these different things. You want to talk about how you actually play the game? Well, w Here's what? a sneak peek of <laughs> the footage. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> Am I supposed to comment? No, you don't have to comment on that. We, we'll, it'll be fine. Good. Um, First of all, I, I want to say that this is fully interactive. It's not a movie that you watch. It's something you play all the time. You're in control. And the thing is that you can switch between Jody and, and this entity. And um, you can play being an entity. So you're invisible. You float around. You can go through walls. You can interact with matter in different ways. So it's fully interactive all the time. But you tell the story. You become the writer and the director and the actor of the experience yourself. So these, these are just to comment what we see. <laughs> this is uh, the kind of technical gem. So every day we started with something like this, which sounds like <laughs> some kind of dance. Oh, the sights <laughs> of Paris. <laughs> and we have a facial gem. <laughs> Same thing. And on the right, this is the result in 3D. So, so we scanned Ellen's face. So it's like a picture, but in 3D. And uh, we scanned the body, and, and we really recreated that in 3D. So we spent a lot of time talking um, on stage, trying to explain exactly what the scene was about, what the emotion should be, and um, making sure they're clear. Because as you can see on stage, you can barely see a door, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a great time lapse coming up. You, you film the entire thing here, right? So you have to break down every scene and rebuild it here as far as what's happening? Yeah, and one of the challenges is the fact that we shoot in disorder for production reasons. So sometimes it's, we do one dialogue here and then three months later we do what comes just afterwards. So it's really like a strange puzzle of different pieces put on the table and you need, at the end, we need to put all the pieces of sure. the puzzle together. But for actors, it's, it's an incredible challenge. And for Ellen, especially, has been amazing at that. I mean, it's, sometimes she had a dialogue. And, and as these dialogues are interactive, you have your character saying, yes, no, maybe, I don't know, different things. Because the player can pick up his choice. And uh, it's very difficult, because you need to be convincing whether you say yes or no. You want the same quality of acting. And um, Ellen just did it like this. I mean, she could jump from one, yes, of course, I want this, to no, no way. And same take. It's just, just amazing. So, Ellen, how do you approach that then as an actor? Oh, my Lord. You just, <laughs> <laughs> you realize it's funny, like, approaching all of this because also, like, the amount of material there is because it's a 2000 that's your, script. That's your favorite but, part with the props. <laughs> oh, that's, see, that's the example of, like, how do you not sometimes laugh, okay? And so... So in the span of two weeks, we're shooting the equivalent of like, what, four movies maybe? I mean, something crazy, like the yes. amount of your, oh, that's a submarine. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, said that. I don't give anything away, right? Um, I did just swear. I'm, and that's an helicopter. That's, that's, that's um, a double dose of. Don't tell the people with the God signs. Okay? And that's an helicopter. And so, and so um, where was I going with this? Oh, so at first it was it was actually really overwhelming, and that in particular, like no matter what the em kind of emotional intensity of what you're dealing with in a scene, I mean, it can be the scroll goes through a lot, is all I will say, and. You know, when you're going from, when you're responding one way to a person and then take a beat, respond in a completely different way, take a beat, respond in a completely <laughs> different way, take a beat, and so on and so forth, and then their next response, and then your next multiple responses. And that's challenging. It's challenging because memorizing the dialogue becomes more diff difficult because it's not like you have some kind of like logical, you know, progression to it. Um, but it's really, it's, it's always fun to do something completely different, and, and that's really challenging. I've never done anything like it, so. <laughs> You're seeing how, uh, yeah, you guys use the space here, throwing people around. 
and then blessing it, I guess that was. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Getting out Ellen's evil spirit so nothing yeah. crash. <laughs> Well, no, there, there's people want to start queuing up. We are going to have a Q&A on the floor here if you want to line up by that mic. But then, so now, how long are you shooting for? Like, you, I know we talked for, it went for a while in Paris. The, the, the full shooting is 10 months. 10 months, wow. 10 months, and it's about 160 actors. Jeez. So it's quite crazy. Kenny, that's you. That's me. Hey, that's you. So now, what's happening here, David? They're acting in the same so, scene, so, but different places? So you, you can see this is pretty much what, what our sets look like. So you have the minimum amount of props that you need, and you have these silly things. <laughs> Just to give you context, and give you context, and give you something to touch and to play with. Everything will be replaced in 3D, of course, and everything's going to look great, hopefully, in the end. But in the meantime, it looks like that. <laughs> and this is the famous picture. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did ten, 10 takes of this one just I because I just kept laughing Ellen so much. <laughs> was just crazy about it. <laughs> I don't know what and why I laughed so much. All right, our first question from the crowd. Hi there. This question Hi. is for the actors. Um, you mentioned and, and touched on about uh, how many times you have to redo different kinds of dialogue, which is a common thing in video games and uh, any voiceover work. But I was wondering, with this new performance capture technique, how many times did you have to redo physical actions just to capture the full range of options that the player could do? Like, oh, you dodge to the left or dodge to the right, fall down, jump, all that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. It was the, uh, you want me to answer? Yeah. yeah. yeah the, uh, that's more of a David yeah, thing. A well, in matter of takes, I mean, it's, we, we, we make as many takes as we, we need. Um, until we're all happy with the, with the, with the result. And uh, now there are some technical takes that we have to make, and that's, that's a separate shooting session. Here we really focus on the emotional takes, all the dialogues, all the things that were really important to the, to the scene and to the character. Thanks. Hi. Um, Hi. Earlier David had mentioned that um, one of the reasons he got into gaming was to kind of uh, expand the creative uh, way of making games, such as like being more collaborative with other art um, art aspects, and that kind of brought to mind uh, the collaboration that um, Kojima Productions had with uh, the creators of Assassin's Creed, where they had that kind of crossover um, aspect of their their franchises. I was wondering if uh, in in the near future there might be something similar with the. Um, uh, Quantic Dreams collaborating with, say, uh, creators of Journey or Flower or something similar <laughs> in that uh, in that similar similar category. Well, why not? We're happy to collaborate with with other. You know, there are the people you mentioned. It's that game company in Genova Chan. It's mm -hmm. someone uh, I, I love and respect a lot. So he's doing amazing games. So yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Thank you. I right, get get Genova on the phone. <laughs> Uh, this is a question for David Cage. I know when you were approaching uh, Heavy Rain and you were writing Heavy Rain, I think uh, you were a new father and a lot of that brought into the themes for Heavy Rain. I'm wondering what themes uh, and what made you approach Beyond Two Souls and why, did you, uh, why were you passionate about it and wanted to write it? Um, actually, uh, I lost someone in my family I felt really close to. And um, that was really a big shock. It was the first person that I, I lost that way. And um, it's really a shocking experience. And um, I, I mean, all people who lost someone close know what I'm talking about. So um, it's so, um, so sudden, so unfair, so cruel, so um, incredible. And um, I, I've never been really a religious guy don't really believe in God, but I guess I, I needed to find some meaning to this experience, and I think that writing a story was for me the best way, and um, I guess this is where, where it came from. Thank you for writing such quality stories. Oh, thank you. Hi. Uh, I wanted to ask how, um, will there be a more emphasis on choice than in Heavy Rain because since there's only one playable character? Um, th there was a real emphasis on, on, on choices in Heavy Rain. I mean, it was really, uh, 
The, 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 the key question, as you probably know, was how far are you prepared to go to save someone you love? And, and this question was really to the player. And we, we, we asked them different versions of this question. Would you be ready to um, cut your finger to save someone you love? Would you be ready to kill someone to save your, someone you love? Would you be ready to give your life to save your son? So uh, I think these were very meaningful choices. And uh, we have we have a different approach. I try not to repeat myself from one game to the other. I really want to move on and, and, and discover this great language that is interactive storytelling. So I try to change the rules, change the par paradigms, um, play with what I learned, but at the same time try to learn something else. So I change the language and I, I try different things on Beyond. That's so um, hopefully you'll be surprised. Thank you. And Thank Greg, you. Beyond. Beyond. <laughs> Yeah, if you didn't know, David Cage ripped off my podcast name for his game, but whatever, <laughs> no big deal. Um, so this is for David. Um, so obviously there's a lot of different directions that a player could go in this game, um, you know, different routes they could take and different endings they can get. Um, and so if you were to recommend, um, you know, a certain way to play the game to an audience who's never played the game before, uh, would you recommend... Um, playing the game as yourself and responding the way that you would react as, a, as an individual yourself, or um, respond to the actions in the game from the character's standpoint, which you might think the character um, might do um, in that situation. Here's a story. Um, there is a, a gamer came to me and told me about his experience playing one of my former titles called uh, Indigo Prophecy. And... <laughs> Okay, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so there is a moment where um, the ex-girlfriend comes, comes to Lucas' apartment, and you, you have different ways of playing this. And you can be very nice and fall in love again and kiss her and make love, or you can be really cold and, and send her back. You don't need your stuff, get out of here. And the guy played it once, and he said, well, I'm a nice guy in real life, so I played it nice. So I tell, told her to come in and be as nice as possible, and we end, ended up making love. And the second time yeah. I was playing the game, I said, this time I'm going to be tough because I want to, to see the other version. And she came, she knocked at the door, and she said, can, can I come in? And he said, Could, couldn't do anything than opening the door and let her in. And he said, that's incredible, because this is how I am in real life, and I, I couldn't play otherwise. I mean, I had to be nice to this girl, because she was so nice herself. <laughs> so I think that people really play the way they are um, most of the time. And this is what we saw in Heavy Rain. We heard people really arguing with their wife. Why? This is the way you treat our children? I mean, do you give them pizza to eat? I mean, this is the kind of father you are? So. That, that was interesting, so I think people play it the way, the way they are, and that's what's interesting and fascinating about these experiences. And one, one tiny thing, I hope that people will play uh, with um, playing the game in, in one walkthrough. Not stop and go back and, and replay things. Just play one experience, go with your choices, bear the consequences, finish the game, and never play it again. <laughs> because wow. that's what life is about. <laughs> Thank you, and if you'd stick around to sign these for me at the end, sure. that'd be great. Thanks. No, 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 don't applaud that yet. David, that's fine. If you want people to do that, I'm totally cool with that. Make sure I can get the platinum trophy on one playthrough, though, because I gotta go back and get it otherwise. Love your work, David, and uh, Heavy Rain really impacted me a lot, and it was a very emotional experience. Quick question about Heavy Rain. I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to ask this again. Um, in the ending where Madison survives, why did you have that really ambiguous scene with the uh, frightening chap approaching him <laughs> at the book signing? Uh, I assume there's never going to be any sequel. That was a really ambiguous cliffhanger. We wanted to play with this idea that there was something else going on. And, and I wrote actually this story, but um, I'm afraid it's never going to be released. So can you give us any information here? No way. <laughs> Thanks, anyway. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Obviously, I love your games. Um, the big thing is that, um, and if, I, if the, you can't answer this question, I have a backup question. Um, <laughs> okay, let's move to the backup question. Always, <laughs> with all of your games, there's always, like, like you said, a question, like in Heavy Rain, how far you would go. 
what's the question? What's the what's the the thing that pulls in the gamer for beyond? Uh, what's beyond? <laughs> and the game answers this question. Ah. Boom! Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mind freak. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you're, this is it. One more question. You're it. Make um, it good. I have a question for uh, Miss Page. Um, I was wondering, what made you to decide to go from the movie industry to video games? I mean, they're almost two completely different things, and especially as a woman, because there are not many woman characters in video games. <laughs> yeah, nor in movies. Um, <laughs> that's, that's very true. <laughs> and. Um, well, there are, but it's uh, you know kind of a, yeah. it's 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 a typical narrow idea of what um, a, a woman is, and I you know I think it's funny because like don't kill me for this, but I hadn't other than um, a, a very intense relationship with a Sega Genesis when I was a kid, <laughs> as well as um, the original PlayStation. Um, video games sort of ended for me when I was about 16, more just because of the way my life was. I went to school and I worked and I didn't, you know. And so, to be honest, when the opportunity came up, it's kind of maybe exactly what you're saying. Like, why would I do this? Because it's it seems so different from the film industry and that's probably exactly why. It's like, one of the great things about my job is true. Every project I begin is different. New people, new character, new world, new... Uh, new location, um, everything about it is new and exciting. And this was something that was taking that concept and that that aspect of my job to a completely new le new level. And quite frankly, what attracted to me it was was David and this incredible script that he wrote and this female protagonist that is in a game, you know, uh, that has so much depth that is subversive, that is so interesting, that is so moving, that's so profound, and also is full of so much action and excitement, and it's just an incredible, incredible story. And to center that with this uh, really unique young woman, Jody, is just, I can't thank him enough for that. And what an opportunity as a young actress to, to do that. So I feel like just completely humbled and completely excited to be involved with this project. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Beyond Two Souls out in 2013. One more hand for your panel. There you go. Beyond! <laughs>